at Apple's WWDC 2022, I was able to go hands-on with the brand new MacBook Air powered by the next generation M2 chip. In this video, I tell you the most important things you need to know about the world's most popular laptop. What's going on tech squad? The new MacBook Air is here and I was able to check it out at WWDC. Let's jump in and get started by talking about the new design. With this announcement, the MacBook Air picks up its first major redesign since 2010. Yes, for 12 years, Apple has been using the iconic tapered design that we've all become accustomed to on the MacBook Air. But at WWDC, they revealed something entirely different. Gone is the tapering replaced with an enclosure that sees even thickness all around. It kind of resembles and feels like a miniaturized version of the 14 inch MacBook Pro, which is a good thing in my opinion. The new Air is 11 millimeters thick and weighs just 2.7 pounds, which is crazy. When I picked it up, it felt like the weight of a toy laptop. You get a headphone jack with support for high impedance headphones on the right and two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the left alongside a MagSafe connector for charging. On the previous model, you had to use one of the two Thunderbolt ports for charging, so this is a very welcome change, as is the full-size function key row and Touch ID button. Of course, one of the biggest design changes happened on the inside of the MacBook Air, which brings me to the M2 chip. The new MacBook Air ushers in the next generation of Apple Silicon. Apple changed the game with the M1, and with the M2, you're getting even more power in a few ways. The new M2 chip offers 1.4 times the performance of the M1 model, depending on the task. That's if you pick the one with the eight core CPU and 10 core GPU. And it should be noted that that costs an extra $100 over the standard M2, which has eight GPU cores instead of 10. The MacBook Air also comes with only eight gigabytes of unified memory by default, with the 16 gigabyte option costing $200 more. That's actually where the M1 stopped, but the M2 offers an additional 24 four gigabyte option, and that costs $400, giving you 50% more RAM at the top end than you could get on the M1. During the keynote, Apple said the M2 MacBook Air offers 38% faster video editing performance and 20% faster image filters and effects performance. When I was playing with the MacBook Air myself, I went right into Final Cut Pro since that's a power app that I'm super comfortable in. They had a project there which had seven concurrent 4K video files on the timeline, and the the air played it back like butter. I mean, it was super smooth, both when playing and when scrubbing through the timeline. And this is something you would never have even tried on the most powerful Intel-based MacBook Air. That said, it should also be stated that the M2 is a direct successor to the M1, but the other chips like the M1 Pro, M1 Max, and M1 Ultra found in the MacBook Pro and Mac Studio, those are more powerful and have more benefits over the entry-level M2. It should also be said that if you're still on an Intel-based MacBook Air, the M2 model is up to 15 times faster than what you're using today. All right, up next, let's talk about the display. The 13.3 inch display from the previous model has been enlarged a bit, bringing the diagonal screen size to 13.6 inches on the new version. This means that the bezel size has been greatly reduced in order to accommodate the large screen, and you'll find a new 1080p camera up from 720p inside the display cutout at the top, similar to the MacBook Pro. The display is also 20% brighter, hitting 500 nits of brightness, and now supports P3 wide color, giving it the ability to display a billion colors. One more note on the camera, it looked really good when testing it, but this was in Apple's perfectly lit hands-on area inside the Steve Jobs Theater. I look forward to testing it in real world conditions, especially to see how that two times improvement in low light capabilities works. Okay, up next, let's talk about the new colors. People love talking about the colors of these kinds of products, so let's dive in. Previously, we had silver, gold, and space gray. Now we're going back to the days when the MacBook Air had four colors, rest in peace, rose gold. There's silver, which is the most classic of the MacBook Air colors. Space Gray is still here for those wanting something subtly darker, but not too dark. Apple's new Starlight color that we've seen on some other devices makes its debut here on the MacBook Air, 
basically replacing the gold option in my opinion. And lastly, Midnight also comes to the MacBook Air, giving you a much more bold, dark color for those who like that look. Now, similar to Midnight on other devices, it basically looks black until you hold it up in just the right light where you realize that it's really a very rich, deep blue color. Now, just a word of warning from me, I thought the Midnight color looked the best personally, but it also seemed to be the one that showed fingerprints the most by far out of the four colors. So something to consider if you care about that. Oh, and the MagSafe cables that are included with the MacBook Airs are also color matched to the device. So you'll get a different color braided cable and connector depending on which color you buy. Next, let's talk about battery life. According to Apple, the new MacBook Air gets up to 18 hours of battery life, which is similar to the previous generation model. Obviously, I was only able to spend about 30 minutes or so with the MacBook Air, so I definitely didn't have a chance to test out the full capabilities of the battery. We'll have to wait and see on the review unit to do some more in-depth testing, but just know that when you see the 18 hours of battery life from Apple, this number is for video playback with all the radios off. So no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, etc. Still, I think it's very safe to assume that the M2 will get the same fantastic all day battery life as the M1, but I'm guessing you'll see closer to 14 to 15 hours in real world use. Let me know your thoughts on the new MacBook Air in the comments below, along with any questions you have, and I will catch you in the next video.